hey guys welcome back to my channel so in today's video i'm going to be talking about basics basics how to build a basic skincare routine that is full proof and effective basic skincare routine and this video is actually meant for people who are just getting into the skincare world who want to build a routine but do not know where to start from you know there are so many products out there there are so many new ingredients that are coming to light every single day and a lot of times people do not even know where to start from or where to stop you find a lot of your celebrities using um a lot of skincare products you do not even know if those ones are going to work for you you know and there are so many skincare trends out there no so let me start off with this when it comes to um a routine you basically need to do it in the morning and at night and um, the reason why you need to do it in the morning is this you need to protect in the morning what you basically need to do is to protect 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 your skin from the sun protect your skin from pollution protect your skin from everything possible at night you need to cleanse and remove your makeup remove your SPF remove every dirt that you have accumulated going around or the dust and everything you need to remove that and rehydrate rehydrate to keep your skin moisturized and supple so, so I mean, how do they pronounce it i think it's supple so you know something that is very soft and glowing and fresh let's get right into the basic steps so there are four basic steps four four just four just four yes and then um, the four steps are cleansing exfoliating moisturizing and protecting basically cleanse exfoliate moisturize and protect simple now how you choose to incorporate these four things into your routine is basically left to you a lot of times when you find people with nice care routine 10 care routine all those actually actual steps can be categorized into these four basic steps because if you are somebody that when you finish washing your face you're using an hydrating toner before you are using before you end up using an exfoliating toner and then after that you decide to use an essence it's still you know you exfoliated you hydrated you exfoliated it's still moisturizing you get to moisturize and then you decide to put up you put in put your moisturizer the face mask you decide to put on is still moisturizing so there are so many of these things that actually are into this four basic steps and then people decide how they want to expand it so you can shrink and expand so let's start from the cleansing and um, why do you need to cleanse your face you need to wash up dirt you need to clean your face from um, pollution environmental pollution and every other thing make sure that your skin is um, cleansed <laughs> oh my god I'm saying cleansing and cleanse at the same time so you don't mind me you need to make sure that your face is fresh and is not dirty and then you remove excess oil um, that can end up clogging your pores you know when you moisturize you need to remove the moisturizer you need to remove the SPF that you've used all through the day because you if you keep if you use okay just imagine now use a moisturizer hmm? and then you didn't wash your face and then tomorrow you come again you use another you, you moisturize again the next day and then the next day you moisturize again and then the next day you do that for like a week what, what that means is that you've piled up five days moisture on your face what is going to happen at the end of the day your pores are going to end up getting blocked because you are not trying to even remove them from your face at all you're just piling them over themselves over themselves and that is why you need to you need to continuously 
cleanse your face. Now, what you do not want to do is to use a cleanser that is um, stripping, a ash cleanser. You do not want to use a cleanser that is going to end up drying up your face. And, and this step is... People who have oily skin are actually really, really guilty of this step. I actually used to be very guilty because I have oily skin and I used to have this mentality that oh, because I have oily skin, I need to use things that remove the oil from my face. I need to wash the oil off. I need to get off all the oil from my face so that my face can be matte. But what actually you are, what you're actually doing is counterproductive because what actually happens is that you send a signal to your to your, to your brain or your skin your, to your skin that it doesn't have oil again and what happens is that once your skin gets it it's like alarm 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 no oil no oil no oil and then next thing is like i gotta give it more oil so that just in case you decide to remove this oil it's going to have more this thing so the more you try to strip your skin from um from its natural oils the more your skin is going to produce oil. So the more you try to strip it, the more oil is tries is going to try to produce. And this actually is for oily skin. For people who have dry skin, it's another thing entirely because your skin is actually not even producing enough oil. Your your face is basically just going to be getting drier and you're going to start having fine lines and wrinkles. People who have oily skin is going to be giving you more oil, which is going to lead to your um your pores getting clogged. Sebum. Bacterias feed on sebum. Sebum is the oil that your face produces. Now, once your face is producing way too much oil, it is room for bacteria to breathe. Meaning that you're gonna get acne. You are going to get acne. <laughs> you're going to get acne. So, basically. Now, that is why you need to. Your first step is really, really crucial. In as much as people think, oh, I just need to wash this thing off. People just assume that because your cleanser comes off your face very fast, you don't need to really look into it, but you actually do. Because you want to start your hydrating process right from your cleanser. You want to cleanse your face, but, but at the same time, you do not want to strip it. And you want even your cleanser to even give you a, 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 an amount of moisture that you are going to end up building on. You're going to keep building on and building on until you get your moisturizing stage with that is going to end up sealing everything up together i don't know if i'm making sense okay yes i am making sense so basically that is what you want to do so you want to opt for a cleanser that suits your skin needs now you might be somebody that someone that has eczema you might have rosacea you might have really sensitive skin you might be acne prone oily skin dirty skin um dry skin combination skin skin problems now depends on what you want to achieve that will determine the kind of cleanser that you want to go for now let me say this here i'm supposed to have put up a video that shows you how to find your skin type but that video is going to come up after this video so you guys should just subscribe to this channel so that you can get that video because you need to you need to have that video to be able to to even build this particular routine that I'm talking about. You need to know your skin type. It is mandatory. You need to know your skin type because if you if you don't, it's just a waste. You want to buy a cleanser, you don't even know which one you are going to get. Maybe it's a cleansing balm, an hydrating cleanser, a cleansing a cleansing gel. They call it different names. Like some people even call it face wash. Some people call so there are some. Brands, there are so too many brands out there for you not to know your skin, for you to be able to streamline. And then you need to know your skin type, know your skin goals, know your skin needs, for you to know what you are going to incorporate in the four basic steps. So moving on to exfoliating. So when it comes to exfoliation, what why do you need to exfoliate? Well, you need to remove your face is constantly shedding um it's skin so you need to remove those dry skin so that the ones that are still alive and under the, the glowing ones need to so that they resurface the, your dead skin cells are be, be, basically become dull 
So that's why over time, if you do not exfoliate your skin, your skin begins to look duller. Some people tend to call that, say that my skin is getting darker, but your, not necessarily your skin might not be getting darker, it might just be getting duller. Because there's a difference between your skin getting duller and your skin getting darker. So, and um, for people who are maybe acne prone, want to um, tighten their pores or, or um, reduce the visibility of their pores because your pores actually do not shrink. So, reduce the amount of visibility that you can see on the surface you might need certain types of exfoliation. Now, exfoliate, when it comes to exfoliating, we have two major types. We have the physical exfoliation and the chemical exfoliation. Now, it depends on which one you want to take. When it comes to physical exfoliation, we have um, your normal sponge, um, face cloth, um, you have, um, what do they call those things? Loafers and your normal scrubs, the ones that are made with salt, sugar, oats, whatever it is that they made them with. That is what you use for physical exfoliation. When it comes to chemical exfoliation, we have your acids, your glycolic acid, your lactic acid, mandelic acid, salicylic acid, and so on for chemical exfoliation. Now, you might be like, what's the difference between the two? Physical exfoliation, is, as the name implies, is physical. When it comes to those scrubs, you use them on your face, like that. Boom, boom, boom. You slug it off. Now, the disadvantage of physical exfoliation might be that. Um, it might be too abrasive. You need to be careful of the products that you use because you do not want to cause micro, micro tears in your skin. On your skin, you do not want to cause micro tears on your skin, and that might be the disadvantage of using physical exfoliation. And um, one of the advantages is that you get immediate results. The moment you're done scrubbing your body, you begin to see your glow, so it gives you immediate results. When it comes to chemical exfoliation, okay, and then physical exfoliation basically kind of works on the top of your skin, the top most layer of your skin. Now, those exfoli exfoliants might contain certain chemical exfoliants that goes in deeper. Like for example now, you might find that some of your facial scrubs might have lactic acid, glycolic acid in them. Those are the things that go deeper, salicylic acid in them. Those are the ones that go deeper into your skin. Now, when it comes to chemical exfol exfoliants, we have the acids, we have the BHAs, the AHAs, now the PHAs, the BHAs, that is the salicylic acid, that one penetrates into, penetrates deeper into your skin, which is why it is recommended for people who have acne to unclog your pores deep down inside. And then it can be a bit drying also, and that's why it's recommended for people with acne and oily skin so if you are acne prone but you do not necessarily have oily skin it's my nonest so that can be may not be recommended for you for the AHAs do those ones do not go as deep as the BHA then we have those are the glycolic acid the lactic acid the mandelic acid and so on and then these ones are a bit more moisturizing than the salicylic acid at least the lactic acid is gentler than the salicylic acid and it's more moisturizing which is meant for people who have more sensitive skin because if you are if you have really really sensitive skin you might not really be able to use some of these chemicals because they might burn you but some of them there's now some of these chemical exfoliation exfoliants that are good for people who have sensitive skin. Now, the flip side of using um, chemical exfoliants is that it makes your skin much more sensitive to the sun and then you can get chemical um, 
you can get bonds yes chemical bonds if you are not careful if you do not use your acids the right way imagine starting uh, um, glycolic acid and you using it five days in a week you're going to your skin is going to end up becoming very very sensitive and you might get chemical burn sunburn especially if you are using chemical exfoliant exfoliants and you are not protecting your skin that's why anytime you want to use chemical exfoliants they always advise you to protect your skin from the sun because it makes your skin more sensitive to the sun then moving on to moisturizers now we have hydrating moisturizers and then moisturizing moisturizers and then when it comes to moisturizers we have the moisturizing gels we have the creams we have the lotions we have the balms so depending on what you need gels for people who are more oily because it has more water than um, oil then uh, the lotions the balms that are meant for people with drier skin and all that so um and why do you need to moisturize your skin you need to moisturize your skin to keep it hydrated you need to make sure that you are not losing too much water you need to seal it back your the moment you cleanse your skin you start to lose water they call it trans epidemic water loss your skin starts to lose water what you want to do is to put a stop to the water loss because you at the end of the, if you keep losing water your skin is going to get dehydrated at the end of the day so you need to if for if you want to get optimum amount um, of moisture or hydration from your moisturizers what you want to do is the moment you're done washing your face I found that people parambulate after they are done washing or even having their baths, they, they go and wait until you. you do not want to wait until your body dries out because the moment you you put on your cleanser, put a cleanser on your body, on your face, your, your skin starts to lose water. You do not want it to keep on losing water. You want to make sure you stop that water loss. So you want to combine the water that your moisturizer already has plus the water that you that is still in your skin to make sure that you have the optimal amount of hydration. Am I? I'm beginning to talk like I'm in the class. <laughs> so, now when it comes to um, the last step, and that's protect, protect, protect. Now this step is actually only meant for the daytime. You do not protect at night. You do not use SPF at night. So when you use uh, SPFs, what you are trying to do is protect your face from harmful UV rays. So we have the UVA and the UVB that is coming from the sun. You want to try to and to protect your skin from sun damage. You might discover that if you are somebody that regularly who regularly works on that goes under the sun a lot, your face to your neck, your this side of your hand becomes darker than the rest of your body. And that's because when you go under the sun, the sun starts to turn you. It starts to your it starts to it make, basically makes your body produce more melanin to try to compensate. And then you begin to have what they call hyperpigmentation, which is something that a lot of black skin tend to deal with. If you're someone who breaks out a lot, when your skin ills, you tend to have hyperpigmentation. That's having a lot of pigments in a particular spot while your because while your skin is trying to heal that particular spot when you go under the sun the sun amplifies it so if you're someone that is dealing with acne and you have acne spots on your face and you go under the sun you will discover that your acne spots are not fading because you're not protecting your face from the sun it's going to keep it's going to amplify the already hyperpigmented skin that you have then the sun also causes aging. It speeds your aging process. If you if you just um, try to think of people that you know that work under the sun a lot, people who do a lot of work under the sun, especially or the people that sell in the market and all that, you find out that 
a lot of times most of them look really old they tend to age you might meet one or two of them and they will tell you they are just 20 something or they will tell you they're just 30 and then you keep wondering why this person looks this old they already have fine lines and fine lines and wrinkles on their face and that's because they are constantly under the sun without any form of protection and the sun does speed aging it also dehydrates your skin you can also get sunburn from going under the sun if depending on how sensitive your skin is but regardless of how sensitive your skin is you need to constantly protect your skin if you want to stop aging um stop yourself from getting sunburn stop yourself from getting tanned and darker um you're using any form of exfoliating ingredients and the rest of that you need to protect protect so those are the four basic steps that you basically need for your skincare routine that is foolproof and whatever it is that you want to put in and remove from it is left to you thank you guys for watching this to subscribe to my channel see you in the next one it's crazy right